before we get into today's story, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Though the prestige associated with obtaining a medical license often inherently leads to a trust and reverence for the men and women who dedicate their careers to the field, it is impossible to enforce morality upon monsters who choose to abuse their knowledge in order to harm, or in the case of most of the medical doctors elaborated upon in this list, murder those who've trusted their health and lives to these individuals. These are the top 10 most evil doctors in history. Number 10. Dr. Morris Stolber Arrested in 1939 in association with the murder of an estimated 30 to 50 people, Dr. Morris Dolber was a member of the Philadelphia Poison Ring, founded by Herman and Paul Petrillo in the early 1930s. Dr. Dolber was a practitioner of La Fatura, a questionable potion-based sect of medicine that was designed to help patients improve their lives. The Petrillo brothers had developed a business model wherein they would write false insurance policies with themselves as the inheritors and then refer their customers to Dr. Morris Dolber for an examination, who would then prescribe them a special potion. That special potion? Arsenic. Upon being caught, Dr. Dolber confessed everything to the authorities, who arrested the Petrillo brothers, whereupon they were sentenced to death. Number 9. Dr. Linda Burfield Hazard Dr. Linda Burfield Hazard was only a doctor based on a loophole in Washington medical policy that allowed practitioners of unregulated medicine to be grandfathered in once new laws were implemented. This proved to be gravely unfortunate to the estimated 40 patients who died under her care and the hundreds of others tortured as a result of her belief that excessive eating was the root of all illness. She created a business model wherein she would lock patients in for, in many cases, months on end after gaining power of attorney and declaring them mentally incompetent, all the while feeding them a diet consisting of a small amount of tomato and asparagus juice and an infrequent teaspoon of orange juice. Patients were also believed to have been beaten daily and forced to endure regular enemas. She was eventually caught after the death of a wealthy British woman in 1912 whose carcass weighed 50 pounds upon discovery. Though she was sentenced and found guilty of her crimes, for some unknown reason, she was released two years into her sentence. Number 8. Marcel Petio. From the time he was a child through when he admitted to murdering 60 people through the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, Petio is known to be a highly intelligent but highly perverse man, with a fondness for stealing everything ranging from mail to military blankets, the latter of which would have him discharged from the army on account of mental unfitness. This label of mental unfitness wasn't enough to keep him from earning a medical degree. While living in Paris in the 1930s, Petio set up an operation wherein he would offer asylum to Jewish people looking to escape the Nazi occupation of France. He would then inject them with a medicine designed to fight disease, he said, that would then slowly kill them, whereupon he would rob his victims and put their bodies in his soundproof basement. He was caught amidst the liberation of Paris and was officially charged with 26 murders, though he confessed to many more. Number 7. Harold Shipman. Harold Shipman was inspired to pursue his medical degree after his own unfortunate experience watching his mother eventually lose her battle with lung cancer. Though his motives in entering the medical field were noble, his endeavors that followed were anything but. In 1975, he was forced to enter rehab after being caught forging prescriptions for opiates, to which he was heavily addicted to at the time. In 1977, an undertaker nearby made it known that Dr. Shipman's patients were dying in unusually high numbers. This wasn't pursued further until an elderly patient of Shipman died under suspicious circumstances, and the family realized that the man's will had been changed to make Shipman the beneficiary. An investigation ensued, and it was discovered that this had become a regular practice of Dr. Shipman, who would overprescribe and in some cases directly overdose his patients after modifying their written wills to make him the primary recipient. He was convicted of murdering 15 patients. However, a later audit estimated that that number was likely closer to 236. Harold Shipman would go on to hang himself in a jail cell before ever serving a day of his sentence. Number 6. Farid Fatah The most recent entry on the list, and the only one who was not suspected of murder, Farid Fatah was sentenced in 2014 outside of Detroit for giving unnecessary chemotherapy to over 500 patients, a number of whom never had cancer. He was sentenced to 45 years and was forced to pay $8 million in damages. 
Throughout the process of his trial, he admitted that he stole over $17 million by a combination of healthcare fraud, money laundering, and a kickback scheme. He admitted his rationale for these crimes. Simply, greed. Number 5. Walter Freeman Walter Freeman, a physician with no surgical experience, made famous perhaps one of the most controversial surgical procedures in the history of medicine, the lobotomy. The process worked by rendering the patient unable to move by way of electrocution. He would then take any number of instruments. In the early surgeries, Walter would use an ice pick from his kitchen. He would then place it on the eye orbits and hammer it into the patient's skull. The patient was almost immediately put into a vegetative state or reduced to the mental capacity of a child. It was estimated just shy of 500 patients were killed in his famous lobotovan, and Freeman never seemed to show any remorse for his acts. It was noted at one point that, quote, the ice pick lobotomy was performed by Freeman with a recklessness bordering on lunacy, touring the country like a traveling evangelist. In most cases, this procedure was nothing more than a gross and unwanted mutilation carried out by a self-righteous zealot. Freeman later lost his medical license, but never faced jail time for his crimes. He died of cancer in 1972. Number 4. Carl Clawberg Carl Clawberg started his medical career looking to assist women who were infertile to conceive children. However, after joining the Nazi party in 1938, he offered to find a quick method to sterilize large groups of people easily. It is estimated Clawberg would go on to kill over 700 with his experiments, primarily revolving around injecting toxins into mostly Jewish women. He was eventually captured after escaping Auschwitz once it was overtaken by the Soviets and died in 1957 before ever facing justice. Number 3. John Bodkin Adams From 1946 to 1956, despite being responsible for the deaths of over 160 patients, during his decade-long period of practitionership, Adams became the single wealthiest physician in England. A major factor in this? Many of his patients left the entirety of their wills to Adams under suspicious circumstances. Even more suspicious was Adams' reputation for counting money and eating during surgeries, as documented by a number of patients who woke up mid-surgery as a result of him improperly administering anesthetics. And despite facing court many times, he was never officially held accountable for any of the deaths he was responsible for, and it is widely believed that he is a bona fide serial killer that was never caught. Number 2. Shiro Ishii Shiro Ishii was a lieutenant general within the Biological Warfare Unit of the Japanese Army. A professionally trained microbiologist, Ishii would go on to conduct a series of cruel human experiments on an estimated tens of thousands of victims. His victims were primarily Chinese prisoners of war and civilians, and he referred to them as logs and viewed them as lifeless and expendable. The scope of his experiments was broad, but consisted of things such as forced strokes, heart attacks, frostbites, and bioweapons exposure. He was never punished for his crimes and shared the information he learned from his experiments with the United States government in order to preserve his freedom. He was eventually charged with a number of crimes, including third degree murder, first degree murder for the babies that were killed, and a drug distribution charge for illegally prescribing controlled substances, an operation that's estimated he made upwards of $10,000 per night running. He was eventually sentenced to three life sentences without the possibility of parole. Number one, Kermit Gosnell. Rumored to have been the physician that delivered Will Smith, Kermit Gosnell was an early advocate for abortion rights in the 1970s and opened his own abortion clinic, the Women's Medical Society, in 1972. However, a later investigation and testimony would reveal that born children were regularly beheaded at the clinic, and during a raid in 2009 following the suspicious death of a patient, half-conscious women waiting for abortions while lying in blood-soaked beds were discovered, along with fetal parts being stored in milk containers, expired medication being used, staff members being unaware of the doses being used on women, and flea-infested cats were found everywhere. Though it is impossible to predict where the next medical monster is hiding, if nothing else, my hope is that this list serves as a warning to pay attention to the clues in front of you and listen to your instincts, even when dealing with someone as seemingly caring, honorable, and prestigious as a doctor.